It is a long way from North Battleford, Saskatchewan to Bangkok, Thailand. But that is where Don Ferguson now spends his time. Don grew up in Saskatchewan and as the son of an RCMP officer, moved around a lot. But he excelled at Taekwondo and spent many years teaching and learning at Keys Taekwondo in North Battleford. He is currently a 7th Dan black belt. I've always, ever since I was a little, little kid, I always loved, you know, uh, watching martial art movies. And, you know, uh, we, I, I used to live in Sturgis before I moved to North Battleford, you know, when I was about six, seven, eight. And uh, the only time my mom and dad would let me stay up late was on Tuesday nights. They had, uh, at about 11 p.m., they had Kung Fu Theater, they called it. And it was basically these old Chinese movies from Hong Kong. Uh, you know, with Shaolin monks and, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, every Tuesday night, I just couldn't wait to watch that. And, you know, and then later on, we moved to North Battleford. And I think I was about 10 years old at the time. And I saw a, uh, a Taekwondo demonstration at the at the North Battleford Mall. And I was the first student to join. And yeah, and ever since then, I, I've been doing it. Don won many Taekwondo tournaments and events. And some of the friends he made along the way encouraged him to go to Thailand. I came here, well, it would have been over 20 years back now. It would have been a lot well, longer, right? 22, 23. Um, I, I came here, actually, I was going to uh, uh, Japan and Korea, and, uh, and uh, a buddy of mine said, oh, you should check out Thailand. It's a great place in Malaysia. So I basically, from there, just came to Thailand. And uh, Thailand is the type of place that it kind of takes you in, you know, the culture. The, the, the people are really friendly. Uh, you know, for the most part, uh, that's just the way the culture is, and uh, the food's great. And what happened is they had a uh, Taekwondo Nationals, and I uh, had an opportunity to compete. And so I competed. I was the only foreigner to compete, and uh, I won the gold medal. And after that, when I went back, uh, went back to Canada, because at the time when I went back to Canada, I had a Taekwondo school in Swift Current, and uh, I, I got asked if I wanted to teach in Thailand. So I, I came back to Thailand and, and that's how it got started. When he first moved to Bangkok, Don worked several different jobs and days were long. Basically, I got here first and then I just, you know, I used to work. Uh, I would work at so many fitness centers and gyms and schools. You know, I'd be up at, at, at you know, 4.30 in the morning to get ready to go to these places because Bangkok's, you know, a big city. And back then they didn't have a sky train or nothing, so traffic was brutal. So I'd get up at like 4.35 in the morning and I'd get home at like, you know, 11 at night and just teaching at all these different places. And then eventually I opened my own school and, you know, I, I did, I do, I do everything proper and it's not easy. It's a lot of, a lot of work to do, you know, for a foreigner to stay here. But, you know, like anything else, if it's, if you want to do it, you got to do it, you know. But Don had learned early that money does not come easily. When we were living in Sturgis, I must have been about seven at the time and, uh, you know, I told my dad, I said, you know, all these other kids allowance and, you know, I, I think I should get an allowance too. So my dad said, well, I'll be right back. And I jumped in the car and went around the corner and he came back and he said, yeah, I got you a job at the gas station around the corner. You start tomorrow. And uh, so I was so small that I need to pull a chair up in order to clean uh, the windshield, you know. But uh, But ever since then, I've always had some sort of, you know, job, like even when I was going to school, like you know, part-time or full-time job. And, and uh, ever since then, I've, I've just, anytime I've kind of wanted something or wanted to do something, I just basically, uh, you know, I'd, I'd work and save and I would do it. You know, I never borrowed money before and I never, you know, asked for money before. So that's just kind of how I do things, I guess. Eventually, Don made more connections in Thailand and opened the Asia Pacific Taekwondo Academy. So it's a very good close range Kick. When it first started, you know, I, I, I there, there was a place that opened kind of central Bangkok, and it was a really upscale mark, uh, like mall, very upscale. You know, had like Versace and Prada and that kind of thing. And I told, uh, I told somebody, I was like, I'm, I'm going to put a Taekwondo school in there, and they said, you're crazy. Is that first of all, no foreigner can really open a business in Thailand. It's really difficult. And second of all, nobody can open a, a place in there. And when somebody says, nobody, nobody, you can't do it, then I'm going to do it. And so I did. I, I basically hustled and worked and saved. And, and I got in there and I opened my, my Taekwondo school there. And uh, uh, 
and been there for years since then, moved to a different location. And, you know, I got about 300 students. And uh, we, we, we also do, like you were saying, work with the Mercy Center kids. And what that is, is uh, there's uh, street kids from the slum. There's a slum called Klunkta. It's a really big slum. There's millions of people in there. And uh, a lot of the street kids who some of them don't have any parents at all. Uh, some of them, the parents are like addicted to drugs or they're bad alcoholics. And, you know, it's just the, it's the slum, you know. So the Mercy Center is a great place. It gives them education and uh, it gives them medical. Because, you know, some of the kids have HIV and such, some of the parents have that and whatever. And so basically uh, I was asked if I wanted to do a, a show, a Taekwondo show to help raise money for them. Then I said, not only will I do the show, but I will start teaching them Taekwondo. And we started that about seven years back, eight years back. And uh, we're still doing it to this day. Uh, uh, it's become so popular that actually one of my uh, full-time instructors is, was once a Mercy Center kid, and now she's an adult and she's a great instructor. So, yeah, it's it's rewarding. Maybe. At one point, Don made the jump to include martial arts movies in his career. Years back, uh, I got a call because I, I won the Thailand National Championships and then I got a call from a guy named Pana Ritikrai. He's a, he's a guy, uh, if you guys know Tony Ja, if you heard of him, he's basically uh, his, his mentor, his master, you know. So I get a call from him and saying that they wanted me to be a part of this movie called Umbak, which was uh, going to be the first of its kind, like full contact, full impact movie. And they wanted me to help them do the choreography, uh, like help them do some of, not the choreograph, but come in and they wanted to film me because they knew how I moved, you know, because I can kick fast and I, I spin fast. So they wanted to like test the film out with me and then uh, do some like consulting and stuff and, and working with Tony Ja. And then after that, they, 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 they wanted me to work in the movie. And then from there, I've been in lots of Tony Ja movies and Jackie Chan movies and John, uh, no John claude Van Damme movies. I've met him many times, Steven Seagal. Mila Jovich. I've met them all. I got stories I can tell you about all of them. It, I mean, uh, it, it, it's interesting, you know, because you meet a lot of these stars when you work on these movies, eh? So uh, I finally said, you know what? I saw what they could do, and I was like, man, if they can do it, I can do it. And so that's what I did. I, I, I just, I, I always wanted to make a movie. I had a lot of stories in here. I wrote a script, and, and I just said I'm going to do it. It wasn't easy, but I did it. And uh, yeah, Mystic Blade. So it, it was good. The Shadow Syndicate can find anyone, anywhere. And it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears making his own movie. It took years of my life because, you know, unless you got a lot of money behind you uh, and, and a lot of people behind you, making movies really difficult. Plus, I made it on film. And most, most movies nowadays are on digital. And uh, I made mine on film, and, and film's like a touchy thing to work with, and it can get complicated, and then that stuff you got to try and fix. It, it was a learning process, I'll say that. I'd like to make another one, you know, but, but uh, nah, who knows? You know, I'm, I'm open to things, so we'll see. And while Don still comes back to Canada to visit family, he's not sure if he will return to the country he once called home. My son loves Canada. You know, every time we go there, he's like, I love it here. I want to go back here. You know, if the opportunity presented itself, I'd go back, you know. I mean, there's some ideas I have. You know, I'd, I'd like to do a TV series, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I'd love to, you know, in Saskatchewan, you know. Uh, you know, I'm from Sturgis. I always thought that was a great place, a great place to, to do a show, you know. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not in touch with what's going on there. I am in touch with what's going on here. So who knows? 